Tonight's talk is Consciousness, Creativity, and the Brain. And um, if you have a golf ball size consciousness, when you read a book, you'll have a golf ball size understanding. When you look out, a golf ball size awareness. And when you wake up in the morning, a golf ball size wakefulness. But if you could expand that consciousness, then you read the book, more understanding. You look out, more awareness. And when you wake up, more wakefulness. It's consciousness. And there's an ocean of pure, vibrant consciousness inside each one of us. And it's right at the source and base of mind, right at the source of thought, and it's also at the source of all matter. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Matter seems like a good place to begin. The solidity of the world seems totally indisputable. As a fixed thing that you can see and touch, your body is also reassuringly solid. But beginning with Einstein, modern physics has assured us that this solidity is a mirage. All of physical matter, everything we have around us, is the result of a frequency. And what that also means is that if you amplify the frequency, the structure of the matter will change. What this self-contained system is a hologram, what's what I call the super hologram. Everything within it is an expression of that hologram. Uh, this is the, one of the great um, characteristics of a hologram is that every part of a holographic picture is a smaller version of the whole. It's as if reality is so connected that no, when you look at one small part you can see things about other parts that the entire whole is contained in the part and in a sense you can't divide reality up because we're cutting up a hologram. We can't find where one particle is because it's always a reflection of all particles. In a hologram, the whole pattern is whole and complete unto itself. And if you were to take any little portion of this whole out and examine it closely, you will see the entire pattern repeating itself again and again and again. Anywhere in this pattern, if we were to change one little aspect on any one of these little holograms, that change would be reflected throughout the entire system. Quantum physics has revealed what ancient masters knew. Matter does not exist. The concept of substance arose from the philosophy of Aristotle. And from that concept came science's conception of matter. The fact of the matter is that the substance of the universe is consciousness. Belief that the substance of the universe is matter leads to what I call a fear-greed dichotomy. As people in their quiet desperation attempt to accumulate as many material uh, 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 possessions and riches as possible. In fact, the substance of the universe is consciousness. Therefore, it is behavior that is important. If you um, get into the realms of fear, fear is a very slow, dense vibrational state. And the more you, you, you embody fear, and the whole of this manipulated society is globally, is structured to make us fear, to make us have stress, to make us worry about tomorrow, uh, and have guilt about yesterday, um, and forget about now, it brings us into a, a slow, vibrating, dense state. We should be very careful about what we believe about the future. The more you attach to a belief system, the more, if reality is holographic, you're helping create it by believing it. And, you know, the great clairvoyant Edgar Cayce said that our every thought, that reality is 
built out of thought and our every thought starts to build reality and we're like every thought is like a spider we're like spider spinning web and that web starts to build and build information um, is the key because this matrix um, this illusory reality that we think is real people say to me what is the matrix answer it's information information creates fractals uh, as information flow increases the number of fractals mathematically speaking increase this was demonstrated by a mathematician named Theodore Gordon fractals are unpredictable functions so things are becoming more and more unpredictable when you start getting into um, fractals and chaos theory when you look at it in terms of a society, this is where it, it starts to cross over into the so-called Illuminati or the negative elite, the world leaders, with their philosophy of order out of chaos. There is some truth to that, in the sense that when the system becomes highly destabilized, there will be random shifts that suddenly self-organize into higher complexity. At the subatomic level, reality behaves in accordance with the expectation of the observer or the measurer, the scientist. Why is that remarkable? Because everything in the universe is composed of those subatomic particles. These atoms are particles that are whirling at lightning speeds around huge empty spaces. And the particles aren't material objects. They are fluctuations of energy and information in a huge void of energy and information. And what the science now is showing is that when you can change the field, that the atom is in, you change the atom. And we're made of those atoms. So when we have feelings in our hearts, we're changing the field uh, that connects the stuff everything is made of, and we literally are altering our physical reality. Once you establish the reality we live in, and the nature of what the physical body is, this biological computer, and the nature of what we are, which is consciousness, and then you start, as I have, um, looking at the way this world is structured and how it works and why they do this and why they do that it suddenly brings into uh, crystal clarity why the world is structured as it is because you know people look through their eyes and they think this is the world but it isn't it's a tiny tiny frequency range within an infinite energy field of infinite frequency ranges and basically it's like a holographic television channel. It is the act of consciousness that actually creates the building block that the universe is made of. I can't imagine a universe that exists without us because it's the act of us observing the world around us that is creating, allowing us to create as we go in a participatory universe. We may never find the edge of our universe as we're looking to define what, what this universe looks like. We may never find the smallest particle uh, in, in the quantum world to see what this stuff is that we're made out of. And the reason is because everywhere we look, everywhere that consciousness explores with the expectation that something will be there, that exploration, that act of looking, observation is the act that creates something for us to see. That we are actually building this universe as we go. Consciousness is the programming language of the universe. We are consciousness conductors. That's what we do. That's who we are. Mm. Consciousness comes through us. It emanates from us. We are the creators. Uh, we are the ones who are targeted on this planet because we are the ones who transmit the reality just like everybody else does. If you switch your brain off and you are sucked into the, the mainstream media illusion. We must understand that we are being used because we create reality. So if we are manipulated in a certain way, and if we are modulated in a certain way, then our creation becomes not ours, but somebody else's. And what happens if we all do it? Everyone in this room decides to take control of reality. I'm talking about reality. I'm talking about quantum physics. I'm talking about taking control of things from the quantum level up from the molecular level up and it works. One of the things we're actually dealing with is some, as I say, some kind of operating system that can be hacked using words. The world is like a ride at an amusement park and when you choose to go on it you think it's real because that's how powerful our minds are. And The ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills and it's very brightly colored and it's very loud and it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride 
for a long time, and they begin to question, is this real, or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered, and they come back to us, and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid, ever, because this is just a ride.